Well, despite pleas for urgency from the people of Alice Springs, they'll have to wait another week for a government response to the crime wave and the violence. A report into the use of alcohol bans in the top end is understood to recommend a return to the policy, but the Territory's leader is resisting the move at the moment. Joining me live is the Nationals MP, Keith Pitt. There's a fair bit of blame to be uh, thrown around here. Do you accept that when you were in government, this policy, the Stronger Futures, was due to expire and then there was no plans, no preparation for what might happen when that did expire? Well, we, we lost government, Laura, and my understanding is those changes occurred in June last year. Uh, but what's very clear is what's happening right now is completely unacceptable. It is a national shame. Uh, it, it is a disgrace for all Australians. Mm. And action needs to be taken. Roundtables and consultation could all happen later. Uh, they need to get law and order under control. They need to turn off the grog. Uh, and we see in uh, areas where the cashless debit card, for example, was taken away. I I'm told there's building problems in those, particularly in Sejuna. Uh, this is not going away. But what responsibility do you take? Your side of politics was in power for the better part of a decade. And this violence has been happening in Alice Springs for three years. Uh, well, certainly we held the majority in the House of Representatives, but that doesn't give us control in the Senate. Uh, and I think every senator that voted against the cashless debit card rollout, I mean, we wanted to implement the CDC across the Northern Territory to replace the basics card which yeah. is very old technology, and it works, and it was supported by communities. Uh, and Labor and the Greens and others have voted against those changes. But it didn't work, did it? Didn't solve the problems. It wasn't all down to this... Oh, the cashless debit card. Cash, cashless debit No, card. not at all. No, but, I mean, these are the, the things that we tried to implement in government and right. we were unsuccessful. We, we couldn't get them through the Senate. Why didn't you extend uh, and, and, the Stronger you know, Futures regardless. legislation? Why wasn't that extended? Oh, well, we've seen the position of the Northern Territory Government. Uh, they, they clearly weren't supportive. Uh, I'd like to think that they're going to have a, a, not only a change of heart, but a change of ideology, because the stronger future this is just not acceptable. You, you... Uh, and that was due to expire. When you were in power, you knew that was going to happen. Um, it was after an election where it eventually did expire, but you could have extended that funding by another couple of years. Uh, Laura, uh, the Howard government put in place the intervention, very tough policy. We put out the cashless debit card trials, which are very tough policy, but they worked. Uh, Nigel Scullion, for example, did an enormous amount of work to try and get Aboriginal kids into schools uh, to make sure they have an education. But what we've seen is federal Labor are ideologically positioned to not have these tough decisions. Uh, they've mm. turned on the grog in these communities against the wishes of those communities, and these are the results. Now, yep. uh, this is yep. where the country is at. It's not acceptable and action needs to be taken. Well, you did double welfare during your time in government. You also allowed early access to superannuation against the advice of locals. And that was disastrous. Do you accept that? Oh, well, these are uh, individual communities, but what I do accept is we're in the midst of a COVID pandemic uh, an extraordinary situation which had only happened once in a hundred years. Sure, but you uh, had, we had that to make advice at the uh, time. very difficult decisions. And, and they had early access to super. And that's many people, locals are saying that's when it all kind of started to go really downhill. Was that a mistake? Well, that early access to super, also, well, that also allowed people to survive uh, at a time where they were locked down, locked in their houses, and couldn't go to work. Uh, but, but the mistake was turning the alcohol back on in these communities. I'm talking about in the Indigenous communities. Early access to super well, those camps, was a mistake. Uh, well, they, well, those, uh, well I, I don't accept that entirely. Uh, in those camps and in those locations, hmm. alcohol was turned back on uh, under the current government against the wishes of the community, and it is a big influencer on what's happening right now. It's no surprise to me, Laura, that a town hall meeting... I want to stop uh, kids and others from breaking into their houses, stealing their cars uh, and assaulting them. I mean, that's no real surprise. Yeah. Uh, and this is now happening uh, throughout Queensland in terms of youth crime. Uh, it, it is out of control. We need to crack down on law and order, uh, stabilise those local areas and then get back around the table and look at long-term solutions. Well, this is part of the problem, isn't it? Uh, 
neither you or Natasha Files or really any of the politicians I've spoken to who have been in a position of power at some stage over the last 10 years are willing to admit where the mistakes were. So without that, without that contrition or even an admission, you, you're risk making the same mistakes again, don't you? Because there's politics involved. Uh, Laura, I'm simply outlining the facts. I mean, that, that's what happened. We put forward proposals. They were knocked back by the Senate. We thought they were good policy positions that were yeah. supported by the community. The Senate didn't support it. That's how yeah, democracy I've works. You about super. Uh, the, these... I've asked you about early access to super. And it was, you know, all the local state was disastrous for some of their communities. Now we sit here and you know, no one got, has got this perfect, right? There are, are no silver bullet solutions. But can you admit that that was Correct. a bad policy? For these communities. Well, how, how would we segregate? How do you suggest we segregate that? Uh, we give access to every other Australian to their super to help them get through a, a time where they're locked down through mandatory lockdowns. Mm. They can't go to work and they need money to survive. Uh, but we'll isolate a couple of communities. I mean, that, that's very difficult policy to implement uh, well, in a very the short period of time. As well, so it, it was a kind of different situation. They had more money than they had in the past, and then they get super. So it was a solution for the cities, but it was a disaster for the communities. L Laura, can you imagine the uproar if we'd segregated those communities for something that we'd applied to every other Australian? Mm. Uh, I mean, this, this is exactly what Anthony Albanese is trying to do with The Voice. Uh, he, he wants to have different rules for different individuals where I think we are all one people. Uh, now, did it create challenges? Absolutely. A uh, sit-down money is something uh, that Territorians in particular tell me uh, doesn't work. Uh, it creates more problems than it's worth. Uh, these are challenging environments. But mm. right now, action needs to be taken last week, last month, late last year. Yeah. Uh, and they're the things that I'm looking for. So you agree with Natasha Files then that there should be no race-based policies? Oh, I very rarely agree with Natasha Files, uh, yeah. and I don't think I'll be agreeing with her on these. Well, that's what Keep you in just mind said. that these are policies you say, you're that were. That, that you couldn't do race based policies when it comes to super, but Natasha Files doesn't want to do that when it comes to alcohol, which is not your position. Uh, Laura, they were established and in place, and they were there and they were working. Uh, and they would continue I mean, to have worked if they weren't taken away. Look, this is not your portfolio, so I'm conscious of that. But on the one hand, you're saying, you know, you can't have race-based policy when it comes to, to welfare and super. Um, and I think you're right, the reaction uh, would have been fierce. But that's exactly what you've done. Um, but you, you oh, say not, not at all. It, it, should be, uh, it, it should be in place when it comes to alcohol. So yeah, but our it? cashless debit card proposal applies applies to all Australians. Uh, it is, doesn't segregate anyone by race. It, it applies to everyone that was uh, receiving social services yeah, in the particular alcohol areas. Policies, uh, the alcohol policies that you're advocating to be back in place, they are race-based. As part of the intervention supported by the local yeah. community. But what we put forward in the cashless debit card proposal applies to all Australians yep. who are receiving a particular but support. The early access it to didn't super wasn't where they supported come from. by the local community. That's my point. But you still did it. I, I agree. We absolutely applied it. Uh, there's no doubt about okay. that whatsoever, Laura. Uh, right. And as I said, in the midst of COVID, in a pandemic where we had to move very quickly, they were the decisions that were taken. OK. I want to quickly ask you about the NDIS. This is a really interesting report um, from the IMF this week. It largely backs in Jim Chalmers' first budget, I've got to say, but it also has uh, brought up um, the NDIS and the way it is actually funded, saying the government needs to change the way it's funded. What do you think about that? Because we do see the cost blowouts, we do see um, changes that the Labor government and Bill Shorten is aware that needs to be made. Would you like to see or would you entertain the idea of a cost-sharing scheme or this being means-tested at all? Oh, firstly, you're a bit outside my bailiwick, but I, I did have a chat with one of my constituents this week who's heavily involved in, in, in NDIS mm. uh, and she's frontline and I agree with what she put forward and that is there needs to be change uh, because there are places where you know, the taxpayer is certainly not getting value for money. Uh, so I think those changes need to be made. And, and we did look to put forward changes inside NDIS and if I recall correctly, once again, uh, they were opposed by Labor and everyone else and we couldn't get them through the parliament. 
Mm. So this is a big chunk of the budget. Uh, what I don't agree with, I don't agree with Jim Bionomics. I don't agree with the proposition from the Treasurer that super funds, for example, which are there for people's retirement, which are looking to maximise the benefit for the people who own that money, which is every single Australian, it's their money, are go into social housing, for example, with lower points of return. So they'll get less money in their retirement, uh, but they can provide a house for someone else who can't have one, but not a house for them. Uh, they're the things I won't be agreeing with. OK, Keith Pitt, good to talk to you. Thanks so much.